just, Sid and I just sent the first, you know, 10 minutes of, uh, of the segment talking about Major League Baseball and what they're doing and how they're doing it. Is the NHL in a better spot? I think the NHL, the NBA, and uh, things like soccer are in a better spot. Um, you know, if I'm the NFL and college football watching this, what's going on in baseball, I'm thinking we better start looking into the possibility of a bubble or something like that. Because I can't see any way that this is going to work in any other way besides a bubble. Uh, um, you know, I, I think that you take a look at, to me, the big tell is the MLS. They went into their bubble and you thought it was going to be a disaster. I thought it was going to be a disaster. Uh, they had two teams pull out. They weren't even allowed to show up. And we were all sitting there saying, not a freaking chance that this is going to work. And now they've had a week of no positive tests. Um, you know, the basketball numbers have been good. The hockey numbers have been surprisingly good. I mean, last week when they said there were only two positive tests, I didn't believe it at first. And, and this week they said they had none in eight days, what they announced on Monday. So um, I think the bubble is the only way to go, guys. And, you know, I think the one thing that uh, the commissioner has said several times now is he's not patting himself on the back or they're not patting themselves on the back that, these can change at any day, any time. Uh, this disease is highly contagious, and if you let your guard down for the slightest bit, you can get it. Um, but uh, it's obvious here that the bubble is the only way to go. And I bet you there's a lot of people in Major League Baseball looking back to those failed conversations of a couple months ago and saying, if we had done it that way, we'd be a lot better off. Well, but Fried, as, as baseball pointed out in, in their uh, in their press release today, it was it was the one team out of twenty nine. But to go to your point in terms of not patting yourself on the back, it just takes one. That's all it takes well, for I, like like, that, like that's the thing. Like Sid, you just read the tweet from Ben that the Jay switched hotels. Um, you know, like I mean, all you have to do is be non brain dead about this disease, right? If you wear a mask, you cut down your chances of getting it. If you, it's more outside, it's more inside than outside. So you really have to take precautions when you're indoors. Um, you social distance, but you know, these teams still travel together. Um, you know, like, you know, you, we've watched now, like in some celebrations, you know, everybody mobs, everybody else. It's, it's tough to control the emotion. I completely understand it. Like, you know, Sid, like if you have half a brain, you can see that there's only one approach that makes sense here right now. And, and that's the bubble approach. What I'm learning is there are a lot of people on earth with less than half a brain than I originally anticipated. <laughs> that's what I'm learning over the last four and a half months. But you're right. Like, you're right. Mm -hmm. there, there's one way to do it. And if I'm any league, I, if I'm any league to feel good, it's definitely the National Hockey League, not just because of the bubble, because you got the hell out of the United States and it's an entirely yeah. different situation here. But I, I, I'm glad to hear you say Gary Bettman's not spiking footballs yet. That's my main point. No, I'm glad to hear that. I, I wouldn't do like, And he, he's actually, you know, he had, he had a conference call with the media on Friday and he had a conference call with the rights holders yesterday. And he said the same thing in both, uh, avail both Zoom availabilities. He said... You know, we're happy to be here, but we're not patting ourselves on the back. Like they know, yeah. they yeah. know that this could change at any time. It's so unpredictable. I was even surprised that they didn't ask the players to arrive a little bit earlier once they saw what happened with the yeah. MLS's backup. That, that you know that it can lie dormant, and the fact that you're already on the ice, lining up beside each other, um, when you and I know they have zero tests, but it can lay dormant for a little while. And I was surprised they didn't give more than four days in between arriving and starting to play games. You know, it's interesting. You said that, Tim, it's a good point. And we'll see with 2020 hindsight where that goes. I know that in the hotels, for example, you have to stay with your own team for five days yeah. before you can cross over with other teams. But that obviously doesn't include game action. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, uh, there's no question about it that it's fraught with peril. It's worked so far. Knock on wood. I hope it continues. But, Man, this is a, a tricky, tricky, highly contagious disease. Agreed. Elliot Friedman joining us here on Tim and Sid. Uh, we talked to Sheldon Keefe yesterday, and he mentioned that they have already had to adjust their plans in the bubble. Like, what are you hearing early days about life in the bubble? 
Well, it, it's it's pretty regimented. Um, you know, like uh, like there are people. There's there's two kinds of people in life, Tim. There's the people who are on t- on time and early, and there's mm-hmm. the people who are late. And uh, I'm in Group B, uh, as you two both know. You've known me a long time. I'm always late. And if you're late uh, in this in this situation, whether it's testing, whether it's your transportation, should you need it or whatever, uh, you're in trouble. It, it's very regimented. Like in terms of when you're free um, and you have free time, you know, for the first five days, you're supposed to stay with your own team. Apparently, you're not allowed to go to any other hotel. You even, I don't even know if you can access any other floor in your hotel besides uh, the ones that your team is on um, and, and some of the common areas where you hang out with your team. But, it, you know, for example, for testing time, you can't be late. Uh, for other certain things you have to do, like if the bus is going to a practice facility or the rink and you plan to be on it, you can't be late. Um, you know, generally, I think most players and teams are on time to begin with because you all, you're used to having a schedule. But I, but I really believe in general that's being you know pushed. You, if you're supposed to be at something, you got to be there. Right now, uh, you're kind of with yourself. Um, you know, we've seen certain teams bring guitars. We've certainly seen the video games. We've seen. Uh, I think it was either the Capitals or the Penguins that were using the practice facility that the Raptors are, are normally at. They were playing some basketball there. Right now, it's a bit limited. Uh, because the, for the first five days you've got to be with your own teammates. We'll, but then once the games start to get meaningful, you're not going to want to hang out with your opponents anyway, right? right, right. So um, I, I think it's going to be a lot of team-oriented stuff. Elliot Friedman here on Tim and Sid. Fried, forgive me if you don't know the answer to this. What happens if you are late for a test? Is that a fine? Like what yeah. would happen there? That's a good question. I should find out. Okay. Um, Let's move on to tonight. Oh, and by the way, I, I do oh. want to say this. I was talking to somebody last night who was in Edmonton Western Conference, and there were some guys who were worried about Edmonton because the Oilers didn't get like that hub wasn't really at the forefront until right at the end. Like everybody thought they were going to Vegas, mm-hmm. and everybody right. knew they were going to Vegas, and then Vegas fell apart. So I think a lot of the planning, not the planning, but the ability to get things started in Edmonton was late. And, uh, you know, one person said to me, like, they, they move fast. Like, there, there were some players and teams that were concerned that Edmonton would be behind Toronto because Toronto knew they were one of the top contenders and Edmonton hoped to be, but they weren't. And, and they said that Edmonton did a nice job to be ready because they had to play catch up. Good, good, good to hear. Uh, Elliot Friedman joining us here on Tim and Sid. Elliot, what's, what's the biggest injury story of this tiny little scrimmage exhibition season that we have? Well, the biggest one was Crosby, but he's playing today. So I, I think I'm a little bit uh, less, I don't know if worried is the right word, but I, I, I don't know if there's maybe less of a story. Like, you know, these core abdominal injuries, which is, I believe, what Crosby has, and now we know that Stamkos has, you know, like, you know, how are they going to handle it? Like, those things can really linger, and you know, the ice, Colin Campbell made a really good point last week. He said, there's not fans coming in, and you're not opening and closing the doors as much, so you can regulate the temperature of the building a lot better. Yeah, so. But there's going to be three games a day on this ice. So, you know, are you concerned about the ice getting chopped up, more difficult to navigate? Um, you know, will that affect guys who have those core injuries? Uh, I think that's going to be an interesting one. So I, I would say Crosby, I would say off the top of my head, and I, I'm sorry for you Western Conference people who may hate me for saying these three, but I would say it's Crosby, Stamkos, and Dougie Hamilton. Elliot Friedman, Hockey Night in Canada here on Tim and Sid. Leafs and Habs tonight. This feels so good to say. Leafs and Habs tonight, Sportsnet 1, Flames Oilers. Right after that, Sportsnet 1 and then Sportsnet Mains across the country. What will you be looking for the most for each in both of those games? Well, McDavid. Now, I heard McDavid showed up in Edmonton. You know, it, it's funny, like Sid, uh, when, when there was, again, we talk about you could divide the world into two different groups. There were the guys who were ready in, in shape to show up and the guys who weren't because they didn't maybe take it seriously or didn't think they were going to play. Uh, like McDavid and Nurse tra- t- uh, trained together. And I heard McDavid showed up, just looked dynamite, dynamite. 
Right. And I think he's a little pissed off about like, you know, I'm not a, like, I you know, like we just watched the Jordan thing. Right. And I think all the greats have that in it. Oh, you don't think I'm a heart guy. Hey, eh? you don't think I'm a Pearson <laughs> guy. Hey, eh? like <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm I curious. It. To watch, I love it. I'm curious to watch McDavid. I, I, yeah. I think he's going to be something to watch. And you know what? I, I think the other guy, you know, just for, um, a, a guy who I'm really wishing well to, because I don't think this last little bit has been easy, is uh, is Max Domi. Yeah. You know, like he couldn't go at the beginning. You're here. We all know his health situation. He's on the fourth line of Montreal tonight, and uh, I just want it to work out well for him because I'm sure he was being pulled in a lot of different directions. Yeah. It's nice to hear that a lot of people are thinking that Connor McDavid might be at uh, Toronto Media Ilya Mikheyev standards. Because uh, according to all the Toronto media, Ilya Mikheyev is the MVP of the Toronto Maple Leaf. And I loved Ilya Mikheyev. And he's he a good story. I, I can't believe he didn't pick uh, Nick Robertson. I was on uh, I was on with Blair yesterday, and he was promoting him for the Conn Smythe. <laughs> I, did the same, I did it to Sid yesterday and with Sheldon Keefe on Nick Robertson, so I felt like I could step back from that. But the other guy was Ilya Mikheyev. And I love his story. By the way, can a guy not get a nickname just because he likes soup? Like, leave him alone. Holy cow. What do you want to call him? That's ah, just Ilya. Guy's soupy because he says, I like soup. Come on. It's maybe a lazy, it's a lazy nickname. Talk, maybe, maybe you can call Star. You know, you guys got big influence on your show. Maybe you can call him Gaspacho or something and see if it catches <laughs> on. I like Gaspacho better, although it's a terrible uh, soup. Frege, well, we're, we're, we're intrigued for multiple reasons tonight, the games and your face. Uh, thank you for joining us and have fun tonight. Thank you. This is the only time in my life, Sid, everyone's ever told me I actually want to see your face. True. As do millions yep. across the country. You'll see tonight. <laughs> Olympic level ratings for your face tonight. Olympic level. <laughs> Take care, brother. Thanks, buddy. Right. Take care.